Hello, I'm going to wait a couple of minutes for a few people to get on. I will record this, and uh, those that missed some of it can go back. But uh, and I want to just share with you a word from God that God has stirred in my heart the past couple of days and just really uh, uh, kept me awake at night, <laughs> some to just listening to the voice of God and hearing what God is saying. Uh, uh, right now in the middle of this uh, time whenever we have coronavirus going around and these things happening. But God has given me a real word of prophecy, and I want you to stay. I'm, I'm a little later getting on than I planned because I had an emergency phone call just before. But uh, as we uh, begin to look at the word of God, and I want to tell you what the Lord is saying to me. Uh, nobody is, is saying God sent uh, this uh, thing called the coronavirus in the earth, but I felt like I needed to address it. I, I wanted to do it yesterday, and the Lord uh, restrained me to wait because there were so many uh, people trying to stream it all because they weren't having church services and stuff uh, and all. And I, I'm not even going to talk about the fear that's going around in the earth, but I want to talk a little bit about, uh, about uh, what the Lord is saying to me. And I just heard the Spirit of the Lord say, uh, the whole earth is being taxed. All the earth is being taxed. Now, what does that mean? Uh, of course, we know we know the the in America the tax deadline has been moved from April fifteenth, and uh, because of everything that's going on. Uh, and so, we first of all, when we think about tax, we think about the government. We think about somebody imposing uh, uh, some kind of financial uh, thing on us. But I wanted to read you uh, a little bit because I want you to understand when we go, we're going to go to Luke, the second chapter um, and <clears throat> find a principle there. Uh, and we want to look at what God is doing in the middle of all this, because God's not just sitting idly by and watching. Uh, somebody put on one of my posts, I put on a, a post on about the life of God was in me and, and the DNA. And, and some guy got on this, not even my friend, how he picked it up how he saw the post but he uh he, he got on and said uh, uh called me an opportunist said uh, i was uh taking opportun op opportunity for the situation and i was praying about that and the holy spirit said to me uh god said to me uh, i'm an opportunist uh, god's going to take every opportunity he can uh to speak to us uh, he's going to take every opportunity he wants to uh, move in his body in his church and move in the earth to bring people to the knowledge of of, of God but uh, the word the word taxed because that's what Holy Spirit spoke to me I want to take my time and I want you to hear this uh, because the Lord spoke to me the whole earth is being taxed and uh, the word taxed uh, uh, the noun for it uh, says a strain or heavy demand uh, a heavy tax on the uh, on the uh, reader's attention. Um, another uh, part of the verb says, I make heavy demands on someone's powers or resources. Um, and so when we begin to look at tax, I see more than just you know tax day. I see uh, that there's a time whenever people are taxed. Uh, you know, a, ta a task that we're doing or a job that we're doing can be taxing. And, and God said to me, the whole earth is being taxed, and there's a reason. So I went to the Word of God, and God directed me uh, to Luke, the second chapter. There's something that happens whenever people won't move in the direction God wants us to move in. Uh, many times uh, we're stubborn. I don't want to be, and those of you that know me know I'm not a doom and gloom preacher. I try to be positive and try to always bring something that's edifying and uplifting. But I want to tell you what God's doing in the middle of this, uh, in the middle of this uh, virus that has got the whole world uh, afraid. That's got people um, uh, afraid to approach one another. Afraid, and 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 rightfully so. I believe we ought to use wisdom uh, in all that. But I want to tell you what God's doing now, and it's doing it. Uh, I would believe can, beginning in. Of the body of Christ in Luke the second chapter, uh, watch what ha what happens here. It says, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree 
from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Now, I'm using the, the noun here for tax, which means, as I said just a moment ago, which means a heavy demand. And this uh, time is putting a heavy demand on people's emotions, is putting a heavy time, uh, 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 heavy demand on uh, people's finances uh, because people are let, being laid off. It's putting a heavy demand on the church and on pastors uh, because there's pressure not to have service. And then there's another kind of fear that and, and the pastor saying, well, if you don't have service, maybe the people will quit coming or quit giving and we can't make it. Uh, you know, we need to be delivered of fear of every uh, level. Now, if God tells you to have service, that's one thing. But doing it in fear, uh, is, uh, doing it out of fear. Fear can work both ways. I'm afraid not to have service. And then somebody else says, well, I'm afraid to have service uh, because of that. You know, uh, somebody pointed out yesterday, the church is not the building. Just going to the building doesn't make us the church. So uh, let's, let's look at this a little bit. He said, uh, the decree went out. Uh, I heard the Lord say uh, that it has been decreed. I, I was looking back on some of my posts in late, late in uh, sometime in December, uh, the word of the Lord and the prophetic word uh, spoke to me and said that there uh, that that there needs to be a change in the words that's going forth. We have been bombarding the political arenas, the uh, the. Uh, uh, churches, the past that we've been bombarding with negative words uh, that have have uh, really set in motion and set at liberty the forces of hell to come against us. But just like uh, Luke is saying in the second chapter, there's a decree went out uh, in that day. It was from Caesar Augusta that all the world should be taxed, and this taxing was first made known by Serenius, the governor of Syria, uh, and all went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. Now listen to that, everyone to his own city. What is all this about? Is that they're suggesting we stay in our homes, they're suggesting that we stay. And you know, God said to me, that, that's, that's, uh, that's something I can use. Now God, like I said a while ago, God is an opportunist. God is gonna take, op uh, take uh, the, the, the opportunity to speak into our lives and, and God spoke to me that the church should have been bringing forth uh, the Christ uh, all along. We should have been bringing forth something uh, more powerful than what the, the, the church is. And hold on to that because I'm going to be coming back to it in a minute. Uh, and Joseph went into uh, went up from Galilee uh, into the city of Nazareth, the end of Judea, and in the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David. Now listen to that. Joseph had to go because he was the house and the lineage of David. Uh, do you know we serve the uh, the line of the tribe of Judah? We our, our lineage uh, comes. One thing the person that called me an opportunist, he wasn't even my friend, but he got on there and he he, he criticized me for uh, bringing forth something that was positive in the middle of all this. Uh, and and uh, one thing. Uh, you know, that we have to understand uh, that we, we deal with every day the way God's people need us every day, the way the world needs to hear Jesus every day. Uh, and, and see, we are of the lineage of David. I, I put on there, uh, the, his DNA is working, his life and his DNA is working in me. And what uh, one thing he had a problem with is that, that uh, DNA, uh, you know, some people have a problem with the DNA uh, of God working and living in us. Somebody said that's just divine nature activated. But you know what? God uh, brings changes even in our physical beings. Uh, that's why I stand on the word of God, that we are the heel of God. Um, the verse five says, to be taxed uh, with Mary, his espoused wife, uh, being given, uh, being great with ch child. Verse six says, and so it was that while they were there, uh, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. I want to prophesy to you. Somebody's listening. Somebody's going to be, uh, if you're not listening right at this moment, some of you are, because I see you, uh, I see y'all and see Dale and Sherry and, and Don and, and Ann and Vernell and, and Josh. I see you on. But let me tell you something. Uh, the, your days of uh, are being accomplished 
uh, that you bring forth uh, in this earth the way God has planned and purposed for you to bring forth. This is a prophetic word now. This has been burning in my spirit, and God told me to wait until today. I wanted to do it yesterday, but God told me to wait until today, and I'm going to be doing it periodically uh, through, through the day and then through the week. But I want to tell you something. Uh, while God has driven you, while God has uh, put restraints on us as, uh, first of all, as the whole world, everybody, not just Christians, not just the church, but I'm speaking specifically to the church now uh, with a prophetic word that this, the whole world uh, is being taxed right now. We're, we're feeling the heavy pressures and burdens of, of, of having to be quarantined, of having to be uh, uh, having to change our lifestyles, uh, but thank God as we come uh, during into this time, whenever God's causing us to be quiet, causing us to be in a place where we are, are listening, uh, God will bring forth. You you may be feeling the pain. Oh my, uh, feeling the pain of of this uh, this thing. You know, uh, in um, Isaiah, the twenty sixth chapter. Uh, it talks about in uh, the 16th verse. Uh, let, let me read it to you. It said, uh, Lord, in, in trouble have we uh, visited thee and poured out our prayer when thou thy chastening was upon them. Like as a woman, listen to this, because remember, when your time begins to come, the pre you feel the pressure, you feel the pain, you feel the taxi. It says, like a woman with, with child that draweth near her time of her deliver, delivery is in pain and crieth out in her pains, so have we been in thy sight. We've cried out, God, let us be fruitful. Let us multiply. Let us bring forth. But watch what's happened in many cases. But God is about to change some things in the earth. Verse 18 says, uh, we have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. <laughs> now, you know, uh, I, I can see it now. And I've been, I've been uh, uh pastoring and ministering long enough that I've been in places where people go in what they call false labor and all. And, and this says that what they really bring forth is not the child. They just bring forth wind. Can I tell you, there's been a, 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 a barrenness, if you will, in the earth, not a barrenness of carrying the Christ, but a barrenness of bringing him forth. Uh, so uh, bring forth wind. Uh, we have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have uh, have thy inhabitants of the world fallen. Now listen to me. Uh, whenever we begin to bring forth a birthing of the Christ in the earth as we should, I want to prophesy to you, and some of you are right here, you're feeling those pains, you don't know what to do with them, but I want to tell you something, get in that place, uh, and, you know, when, when a woman begins to, to, to bring to deliver, uh, she gets in position, she gets in place, uh, and she delivers uh, uh, that child, Mary, whenever she come into her right place, she was driven into her city, the city that was prophesied. You've been prophesied that you are going to bring forth, and I want to tell you right now by the word of the Lord, this is a rhema word from God, and I ask you not to miss it, uh, that God is about to bring forth in the earth uh, like we have never seen before, and you and me need to get in a in position. Don't just pass this thing out. Don't let the political uh, uh, rhetoric and all that stuff get us distracted, but let's stay focused now. God, what are you saying to the church? What are you, you're bringing us into our city that we can begin to bring forth the Christ uh, in the earth that we can deliver, actually deliver. There's a cry of creation in Romans 8. It says, waiting for a manifestation of the sons of God. And I believe that we're in a time whenever God is going to do it and God's going to manifest it. One more scripture I want to give you and then we'll then I'll wrap this uh, session up. But uh, the other scripture is in uh, the book of Proverbs, the 26th chapter, and begin reading about the first verse. Uh, as snow in summer and as rain in harvest, uh, so honor is not seemly to a fool. As the bird by wandering and as the shadow, uh, swallow by flying, so 
the curse causeless shall not come. Now, I want you to hear that. Uh, this thing is not in the earth without a cause. God is going to take the opportunity now to use this uh, this virus, this this deadly disease that's that's going around is is and you know that has got people so in fear that's got uh, people uh, you know it's not stopping uh, because somebody's got a high position. It's not stopping uh, because somebody is. Uh, a, actually not a not even because of age it's attacking the elderly a little more extreme but i hear uh, now it's doing a, even more difference i'm not here to talk about the virus i'm here to talk about god's use and what god's going to take the opportunity no god didn't send it but let me tell you uh the for a reason the curse has come and the curse is in the earth that it might get the attention of the body of Christ. It's time we bring forth something that's going to expel the fear from the body of Christ, expel the 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 the, the thing that is uh, you know, I'm gonna tell you what, uh, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. This virus is in the world, but greater is he that's in you. And and God is set you in position uh, to begin to bring forth. Uh, you're feeling the travail, you're feeling the pain, you're feeling what God is doing, and you're feeling that pain right now. But let me tell you, God, God has sent you there just like Joseph and Mary went to Bethlehem because it was time for that child to come forth, and it's time. Now watch verse 3 here in uh, Proverbs 26. He says, the whip is for a horse, the bridle is for the ass, uh, and the rod for the, for the fool's back. What's he saying? Uh, like a bridle guides and directs the horse, uh, and, and like uh, and like the whip for the uh, for the, for the ass for the donkey uh, because of his stubbornness. And uh, see, sometimes God sends things or allows things to come into our life to direct us. I'm not saying God sent this uh, disease, but I am telling you, God's an opportunist, and God will use this thing uh, to begin to bring us. To a place that we begin to deliver the Christ that's in us. Is Christ in you? What's the hope of the world? You know, I, the, the, the people are so foolish uh, talking about the president giving false hope and talking about, uh, let me tell you what, we need hope. And, and, and the Christ that's in you is the only real hope that we can share. Let it come forth. Let the Christ come forth. And I want to just encourage you today. Share the word of God. Tell people about this. Uh, this video, I'm going to come back on uh, later on this evening uh, and, and share it again. Talk. I'm probably not going to just record it over and over. I'll come back fresh because we need a rhema, fresh word from God. And I want to tell you, those of you that's listening right now and those that maybe listen uh, later, I want to tell you the word of the Lord has come. You are the chosen of God. You're heavy with child. Ah, that's why the, the, the pains are going on in you. That's why you don't know. Uh, I'm reminded of uh, uh, New Year's Eve. We were going to um, Bath, South Carolina to partake in a service. And my, my wife was talking. She said, I don't know why uh, I'm, I'm crying. And, and, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me through, to her through me and said, uh, th th there's never a birthing without the breaking of water. So let the water break if you need to. Let God begin to bring forth uh, and begin to prophesy and stand on the word of God you've walked on, you know, on in years. I see people on here uh, that, that you walk with God for years. You love God, but there's something in you crying out for more. There's something in me that's crying out for more of God. And I'm going to tell you, the earth is crying out. Uh, the, 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 these things, they have not come without a purpose, without a reason. They didn't come without a cause. Uh, first of all, we opened the door through our rhetoric, through our arguing, through our all that stuff going on. And God, we thank you, Lord, that we're here now at this time when you're directing our path. You're as sons and daughters of God, you're directing our path and you're leading us and guiding us to a place where we can truly burn the Christ that's in us. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. And we will see you next time. God bless.